Okay, here we are again. I thought I'd let y'all know what I've been up to the last few days. Here's a cell I've been working on. It's just part of it. It's just a piece that I've been using to test. There's my positive and negative lines coming in. I'm using a little bit heavier gauge wire this time. And what I call a poor man's DC shunt that I've built to monitor my amperage coming out. I'm hooked up here to my digital meter which right now it's off so it's reading zero. And then up here, here's my battery. And up here I'm monitoring my voltage. Let's see if you can take the glare off of that so you can see it. But I'm right at 12 volts. Maybe closer to 13. I just took it off the charge a little while ago. I'm sure everybody's been wanting to see it. And here's my pulse width modulator that I've made up. And it should capable of handling 360 amps, 320 amps rather, I'm sorry. Here's the main part of it. It's a 555 IC chip, resistor and a couple of diodes there. My power switch, my uh, potentiometer I can use to vary the voltage, and there's my four MOSFETs hooked up to the heat sink, and of course the fans right there. It's all encased in an old computer power supply box. Okay, here we go. I'll turn it on. And we'll begin to increase the voltage, amperage. I'll bring the amperage up, slowly turning this knob. Running seven amps. Look at that. Now this is the new electrolyte I've been testing. This is a mixture of distilled water, baking soda, vinegar, rubbing alcohol, and hydrogen peroxide. I got this off of another YouTube video, a friend of mine that. See if I increase it up to what I'll normally be running off the truck is about 20 amps. So I'm going to increase this up to 20 amps. There we are, 20 amps. And there's the production. Now eventually, I. You see the tube running around the side of it. All that is is just to keep it from leaking out the sides. But when it's finished, there'll be a lid over the top of that, and this cell will be turned upright, where that being the bottom connected up to a reservoir, to the bottom of another reservoir, and this side will be connected to the top of the reservoir, and then at the lid of the reservoir will actually have another spout just like that going out to go into the engine. And that will allow it to circulate the water to keep it cool and allow the hydrogen oxygen mixture to leave the reservoir and go into the engine. Similar to a dry, dry cell circulation, this eliminates the need for the fuel pump that I've been using to run the other cell I have. Foaming up pretty good. Earlier, I actually tested out my pulse width modulator and cranked it up full throttle, and I had about 150 amps running into my cell. It was an ungodly amount of production, but wires got a little hot. <laughs> Hang on just a minute, and I'll turn my heater off so we can hear something. There little bit better. I turn my heater off from here. It gets quite cold. It's actually 30 some degrees outside right now, so I'm inside my garage standing next to the heater. My voltage or amperage rather has increased to almost 22 amps. It's bouncing back and forth 21 and 22. So I guess I'm state 21 now. 
and it's going pretty good. Of course, the mixture of electrolyte that I used, I had to thin it down quite a bit just to get the amperage down. I have, you see there, there's two gallons. There's one full one and one half full. Of course, the other half is there in the cell. But the original mixture, I made a double dose of what uh, uh, Smokey had on his side. I made a two batches of it, thinking that I was going to need at least half a gallon to fill just this. And when I started out, it was drawn an extreme amount of amps. And of course, I could barely turn the dial up on my pulse width modulator before I really had some amps pushing through there. So I've since thinned it out, basically run it... Uh, I've diluted it down to 50-50 mix twice, so it's basically a 25-75 mixture right now of what the original electrolyte was. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to keep it from freezing since I've diluted it down so much, but I'll work on that later. It's been sitting here in my garage overnight and has not froze yet, even though it got down to 26 degrees last night. So I guess we're doing pretty good. But that's what I've been up to. And I'll try to post the websites so that I got the uh, ideas on how to build the shunt on my page. I'll probably put them in the comments. And here's the, uh, I don't know if you can actually read it. That's part of the paperwork I got there. That's actually showing you how to calibrate it. That's all for now. Signing off.